Tanada The reason that we have this commemoration is to mark 100 years anniversary of uh, signing of Treaty Number no. 8. When they signed the treaties, it took them five days to be convinced to be able to sign the treaty. In commemorating what they done a hundred years ago, we put together a five-day uh, events. We have also included as part of this uh, commemoration three days of meetings of Treaty 8 chiefs. Today we marked the June 23rd, 2000 as the 100th year anniversary of the adhesion to Treaty Number 8. It is important to remember what the treaty is about, especially what the elders have always been telling us that treaties are done on a sacred basis and that it's an important document for us to continue to protect for the future, for the children that are among us, uh, for them to be able to learn from what they have heard so that in the future they would also, as leaders, be able to know how, how to protect the treaty and the importance of protecting the treaty for their future generations. I really respect and I'm really happy how much this the Denita culture respects the youth, how much they, they encourage the youth to participate and encourage the youth to get an education, stuff like that. A lot of the youth are participating like either the like like if you come around here you see like a lot of the kids can speak their culture and they can play the hand game just to see that, you know, see this young kid walking down the street just speaking his language, he knows his culture, it just makes me proud. <laughs> Thank you.
We are now uh, in the final stages of, a, of an opening ceremony for the 100th anniversary uh, of Treaty 8, uh, the adhesion to Treaty 8. Uh, this is the exact day uh, 100 years ago where uh, the Crown entered into a relationship, a treaty relationship, uh, with the, uh, the people of, of this particular region in, in northern Alberta and part of British Columbia. Uh, we are in uh, the community here of the Denete and we're pleased to uh, uh, to have the opportunity to celebrate uh, and this anniversary signifies to the Federal Minister of Indian Affairs that our relationship still exists and is one that we're going to continue to work on uh, to make it a modern, uh, vibrant relationship for many years to come. Speaking on behalf of uh, North Peace Travel Council as Chairman of North Peace, uh, I, I look at uh, uh, today as being one of a very uh, uh, special occasion. Uh, very honored and I want to sincerely thank the Chief of Council for the tremendous, tremendous amount of work that must have went into to planning and, uh, and, and, and putting on an event the, the size of this. here to celebrate an historic event. Over a hundred years ago our peoples entered into a treaty with the Crown and Right of Canada. This relationship has been there for a hundred years and we look forward to the fulfillment of the treaty promises that were made 100 years ago for the Denetop people. We are here to celebrate and to commemorate this event that happened a while ago. We as Aboriginal people are proud of our history and our ties with our land and we hope to continue that relationship with that Mother Earth for a long time to come. Radio Radio, and I can see that I'm going to go to the next one. This is the next one. We are all going to go to the next one. We are going to go to the next one. We are going to go to the next one. We are going to go to the next one. It's <laughs> Okay, Sujong
to uh, first of all uh, acknowledge the elders that are here and to uh, thank them, uh, those who will have the opportunity to spend some time with me tonight. Uh, it's a great honor to uh, spend some time with the elders. I want to take the time to thank uh, the NHA, uh, the chief, uh, for hosting us here today. I'm looking forward to spending uh, the day with uh, the community. It's a great honor and a pleasure to be here. Uh, I'm really quite impressed that we're all having a meeting so transparent and open and having an opportunity to let the membership uh, sit and listen in on our discussions, discussions that we have on a fairly regular basis. And uh, it is true that uh, we have met before and are getting to know each other quite well. This is a very important uh, occasion. It's a celebration, but it's also an opportunity for us to speak uh, and build our relationship and start to understand the direction we want to work together in as governments. And so here today uh, is a continuation of our treaty relationship and our building of uh, a future for our children. I'm also uh, very pleased that Treaty 8 has taken on uh, a significant role in looking at economic development, which is an issue that is uh, very important to me uh, as a minister, and I hope that we uh, uh, can work together to build a future in the communities to create a First Nation economy. So we'll have lots of opportunity to speak to each other, and I look forward to uh, uh, speaking to all of you one-on-one -on -one this afternoon, this evening, and early into the morning. Chief, all of you here, I look forward to this meeting, and I appreciate the opportunity. Do <laughs> Sit 
That's the human. That's the that's the human. 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 เด็กเล็กๆช่วงเจอเส้นเด็กห้องเจอโทรศัพท์เด็กเด็กเด็กเด็กเด็กเด็กเด็กเด็กเด็กเด็กเด็กเด็กเด็กเด็กเด็กเ
ที่ผมมาสเกตอยู่สุดที่วิกฤตเอเดนจูเอเดคิอาวุธอยู่อยู่เนาะเสด็จแล้วความอยู่อยู่อยู่อยู่อยู่อยู่อยู่อยู่อ
ジュニアシティ、ただ、ジュニアシティ、ただ、ジュニアシティ、ただ、ジュニアシティ、ただ、ジュニアシティ、ただ、ジュニアシティ、ただ、ジュニアシティ、ただ、ジュニアシティ、
，就你只是很很知道干的。干活就干活，铁头卡子钉，第十个个话筒里叶子里，以后第七大子都叫子的，因，还拉叫的，因往里叫叫子的。我看铁头一天上来以后，干的铁工的被装死，俺的铁泥的，因为这样干的铁工，一路里铁子两两，这第这在前黑工也第几就两了。卡生大子就过来，卡子点火，点火么子的酒，给子酒，喝到就行了。过得好，退休到我大弟的，十块还得，还得老子真的差点子，我大弟的是，那床，真的就他的需要，真的搞的那床，我那生大一的，大弟的就就那床，一晚上，嗯。第二类的，到底是哪一点个？没吃饭，阿子阿达喝过来，老苦的哦。另外，别的还是饿的，你打，一定，谁都没得啊，对，一定没得啊，对，喝过的都贵些，是哦，当，贵当一点点，是，对，快，十几块钱是呀，对，我当哥哥，你打的，他就是给咱点，嗯嗯。所以一对一，我这里了，差的卡少的，就看的我这做没事，我俩子弟，哎，对对对，一路，一到好，是最大个一点，去，可能还都另外是另外留。但是看我俩子留，广大的大的那的高，或者还是那，哎，吃药的，是等待，等待药，对了，是看好的。因为这，一出去管他的，啥的，谁哪有能管你的啥？谁能管得我俩？啥的，快出去的，是看你啊，你啊的啥？一对对干啥子的？是等了的哈，嗯，你啊的啥的？是等了呀的，你这大的里，大的里我是哪里？大的里这大，大，一，一，这大好的，大的大些。嗯，那人打是的，里地方的，懂？因为我是那么大地方，搞开发大的些，我那这里一村都是没自己管的，管的其他的啥？我是那这庄子我的，都给他的，懂？去去去去，我拉他那个，他那个是现在开发大些，开展就会流，还会就会流，一流流，刚好当时看好看，看一点点的。哎，听着，哎，娘，听好，娘，刚是看看的，这家，是看娘的，家的长的，这些的，是等那吃好的，这里，爹爹过，他爹过，哎，妹妹他特意来的，自己过来的，讲，一，哎，看，一家是别的，最多，只要没看我，有亏那个的，这最多，哎，都。人在天的也大一点，老一点，活得好，最多。They seem to be forgotten. Like the the reason why I say that is because、um, our people、um, they have this inherited knowledge that no one can take away, and、uh, we have to move on, move quickly before they die off or、uh, like.、Um, If I didn't pass it on to my grandson, then that's where it it ends. And if it does that, then、uh, I guess we're in a losing battle. Because、uh, just about every year, there's、uh, more、uh, of those policies being implemented, passed, and all that.、Eh? And then, and then while、uh, that's happening, the people don't know what's happening. And it, it's it's an ongoing thing. It's been going on for the last hundred years, and I think if we we don't do anything about it, it's going to go on for the next hundred. Well, I always critically look at the governments, the、uh, the imported governments, I call them. And、uh, there is the the federal, there is the provincial, and then the, there is the municipality, and then there is the reserve. 
So in order for us to uh, be the system be accountable to us, we have to go through all these uh, governments, eh? And and uh, we are. It seems like we are we are undermined. And uh, even though we, we are undermined, within each of us, we're original. They forget about that. And uh, there too, that's that, that's a game they play. Like they, like we're in the response. We're supposed to be under the treaty responsibility of the, the federal government. But then again, uh, where where we live, it's uh, <laughs> province. This idea that the treaties only apply to the reserve, and once you go beyond that reserve boundary. All of a sudden you have all these different interpretations of how those treaties are pr to provide you whether they're services or basic necessities like health care. Now my problem with that is what is there for me on reserve? The only thing for me is to live on welfare if there's no work and I, I don't I don't need that but I still like to see my treaty as an advantage, not a unique, not to be unique in, a Cana in Canadian society today, but I like to see my treaty as an advantage because I'm an Aboriginal. I've been here prior to all uh, everybody else, and and in that respect, I prefer to see my treaty as something far more significant than what it's become today. Being off reserve now. Uh, there are very few and limited advantages to being treaty. There's a lot of things that are, I, I, call, I call it an erosion, and that leads me to Bill 11. I think Bill 11 is one of the few instances in Alberta, per se, Alberta. Because Alberta has never had that kind of a, a reaction to something like that. Until Bill 11 came around. And from our point of view as leaders, uh, we need to be well, more informed what this bill is all about so that we need to uh, <clears throat> educate our people see uh, the changes that's going to take place. And uh, it may affect our treaty rights as far as health is concerned. And it's, it's a big concern of us uh, leaders. But uh, regardless, uh, we need to uh, have a uh, workshop or interview with uh, the uh, appropriate government people so that we can uh, get all the information about this bill, so that we can pass this information on to our people. If we wanted to be proactive about how we want to deal with our issues as it relates to Bill 11, it should have happened when Bill 11 was introduced into the house. I myself wouldn't would have a problem with why this happened because Bill 11 isn't restricted to this mainstream society. We're talking about public health that applies to anybody who has a need to get at these health services. If if after a hundred years this is how I see my treaties, then I have a major problem with the Aboriginal politics. What we really need in our communities is treatment centers. I was going to ask the chief that today, but I didn't get a chance to talk to him. And a lot of elders, they always talk about don't drink and don't do drugs. And, and it's pretty hard not to do that when there's no support. Like we need a foundation of treatment center in the community so people can start healing from the inside and not be ashamed to lift up their head and talk and express their feelings instead of turning to drugs to cover up. I really want the treatment center on our reserves. Hello to all the people of the Denita country and their recognize, I recognize their 100 year commemoration. I wish them the best uh, uh, from this moment on for the next 100 years. I know it's a very important decision for uh, for James O'Hannessy and uh, his group. And so James, I congratulate you on this and I wish you the best. 
Now to speak to the business of hand, the current claims process as it exists today is been a topic of uh, controversy, I guess, and uh, it's a slow, arduous process that I don't think suits anybody's uh, needs today. There has been uh, resolutions and proposals to have an Indian Claims Commission with full authority to address uh, the claims process, one which has uh, legislative authority to make those decisions. This has been in a discussion period for quite some time and Treaty 8 has brought forth resolutions uh, more than once in reference to this issue. We all understand that, uh, Mr. Minister, that in today's world we have to come up with something that's not, that's going to work for uh, both sides. Some process that I think we have to sit down and discuss and negotiate with various treaty areas, uh, specifically I speak for Treaty 8. I, think, I believe there's a lot of room and a lot of openings here to discuss how we can resolve our outstanding claims. Well, thank you very much. And I, I very much uh, want to, uh, if I can, speak to uh, the issue of specific claims to give you um, some information as to uh, the work that was done jointly between uh, the government of Canada and the Assembly of First Nations. Now what's uh, before the communities and the chief is a, an opportunity, I believe a significant opportunity to change how we deal with specific claims using a commission and a tribunal. But at this point, it's a model that has been made uh, public to the chiefs across the country and hope that they will discuss it with their communities and what I, as minister, am waiting now is to get some confirmation uh, from the chiefs, uh, hopefully in their assembly in July, as to whether they're prepared to let me go to present this as a piece of legislation in the House of Commons in September. Uh, I sent all the chiefs and communities uh, uh, a letter and with a background or explaining the, the model that's being presented, and I'm looking forward to the discussions that will occur uh, by the assembly in July, and uh, and I'm hopeful that we can move together to create a specific claims policy. The chiefs, the leadership in Treaty 8, want to ensure that we get away from the dependence on such things as social assistance and getting to a situation where we can be independent and not dependent on social assistance. We want to work with Indian Affairs to ensure that the opportunities that are around us in Treaty 8 and in our communities, that we take full advantage of them with the help of the department. I want to report uh, to uh, the chiefs and the community members that are here that the department of Indian Affairs and Northern Development for many years has not been a, a big partner in economic development and uh, I hope with uh, the announcement if you haven't had an opportunity as leaders and representatives who work in the field of creating employment uh, if you do get a chance to read it it'll signal to you that the department is now becoming uh, an active participant in building economies and we are going to be real partners with resources uh, to uh, develop those strategic initiatives that are important to you and your communities and to the region as a whole. I am very honored to speak on behalf of my First Nation. I would like to acknowledge the Minister for being here and his staff to be part of this commemoration. I think the message is quite clear for the Minister across the country as to the issues that face us today. We talk about unity. That is a must in order for us to survive the First Nations people. Not o only within our First Nations level, within, it has to be within our tribal areas, our regions, and so forth, even at the national level. Our minister has talked to us on several occasions in partnership. I believe in that partnership that he talks about, but at times, 
we as people talk of many things. There are those issues that impact our treaties on a day-to-day -day basis. And here we are commemorating a hundred year commemoration with our neighbors, the Deneth First Nation. As our elders always tell us, on a day-to-day -day basis, our treaties are not being honored, they are eroding. I trust the federal representative that is here in hearing him several times. I trust and look forward to that partnership that he talks about. Elders, I thank you very much for the wisdom and the prayer that you give us in order to survive a First Nations people.